What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them together or fix them if they don't quite rank high enough. Now today we are making our last video having to do with bards in this series. We are going to be building a College of Whispers bard, and then we are moving on. So I took a little bit of a, of a poll, and... Um, we are going to be doing Blood Hunter next, which is going to be a lot of fun. So starting later this week, we will be talking about the Blood Hunter in general. And then next week, we will be going through each of those subclasses. There are only four of them, so it's only going to take us four weeks to get through that class. And then we will move on with Clerics, which there are a bunch. So we're going to spend a long time on Clerics anyway. So I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that that's what's coming next. But if you're not into Blood Hunter, that's fine. We won't be on it for all that long. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, the vast majority of people who watch this channel are not subscribed. So please help us out. We're trying to get to a thousand by the end of this year. I know it just started and we've already had some really great growth just this year. So I am very happy about that and I hope to see it continue. Make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell as well so that you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. So the College of Whispers Bard is a very interesting take on the Bard. It was the uh, the spooky Bard before the Spirits Bard came around and offers some interesting weapon options. And I think that we found a cool way to kind of augment that. Um, there are several different ways that you can build an, a somewhat effective Whispers Bard. Um, keep in mind that of the ones that I find effective, this is one of the least effective ones. Um, I'll show all of the rankings for all the Bards on the screen now, just so that you have a full list there. Um, so yeah, this one is, as long as there are seven or above, I build them. Um, and so this one just barely skated by. It was kind of a six and a half actually, but uh, but we, we round up, it's okay. So I hope you guys enjoy what we've got today. I think we've got a really cool way to augment the kit. So let's jump in. So let's start with race. I went through a few options here, as always. Um, I will talk about all of those at the end of the video with our honorable mentions. So again, if you don't necessarily like what I chose here, there are definitely some different ways that you could build this. So I will talk about those at the very end. But for my build today, we are actually going with a tiefling. And more specifically, we are going with a bloodline of Glacia tiefling. Um, these are a really interesting take on the tiefling. Gives us some interesting magic uh, help. So we get a few extra spells, which is really nice um, and we get resistance to fire which is great and we get a, a bonus of plus two to one stat and a bonus of plus one to another which is great of course we are using tasha's rules where you can uh, move around all of your stats here so we're probably not going to go with what comes standard sorry um, but this does give us dark vision which is great and it also gives us access to minor illusion disguise self and invisibility all very good spells for what we need uh, for what we need for this i really liked this for the disguise self aspect getting that for free um, i feel like that really fits our flavor for what we are doing for this kind of a for this kind of a subclass so i think that this is completely on theme here so far so off to a good start for our stats um pretty standard kind of um but let's see what we got here we have a 17 in our charisma 15 strength 13 constitution 12 wisdom 10 dex 8 intelligence and yeah so it's a little different we didn't dump strength this time um i believe this is the only bard that i didn't dump strength on and it's only because i'm going a specific route with this um so yeah our dexterity isn't great and so we want to make sure that uh that we're watching our backs as far as dexterity saves and ability checks and that sort of thing we're not going to be doing all that well when it comes to those but that's okay we are we are very strong this time around so let's uh let's see where that leads us with our plus two we're going to put that into our charisma and so we're going to be at a 19 and then we're going to put the plus one in strength and so we're going to be at a 16 which is Pretty good start, pretty, pretty good start. Um, now, I normally do not recommend backgrounds for this just because I like to leave the role-playing aspect open for you guys. Um, I have gotten some comments that, you know, these builds are too uh, mechanical in nature. Yes, <laughs> that's kind of the point of the build side of this. But as far as like the role-playing aspect, I try to leave these open for whatever you wanna do because I, I feel like you can role-play about any character 
almost any way that you want and it's going to be great and it's going to be a lot of fun that's why i don't usually recommend that stuff um but for this one i'm going to recommend taking the charlatan background i think that it really fits the theming here and gives you some really cool proficiencies gives you some good starting equipment for what you're wanting to do um i i think that it just completely fits in with what you want of course you can do what you want, whatever you want to do, but um, I, I think that it would be really, really nice for you to take that. As far as our equipment, um, we get uh, some chain mail with what we're what we're doing. We are going to take a shield, and you probably want to take a war hammer or a battle axe. Now, you're thinking, wait a minute, bards don't get all of that stuff. Why, why are we going with that as our starting equipment? Well, it's because we're not starting Bard. We are starting with a different class entirely, which I think is really great. I want to use another class to get some key features that I think will make the Whispers Bard much more effective than it was on its own. And so we need to start elsewhere and then we will come back. So just give us a second, we will get there. We're starting Paladin and I don't think I've made a, a Bardadin, I guess is how you would how you would classify this. Um, I don't think I made one. I may have, then I just forgot. But yeah, I don't think I made a Bardadin. But they're actually pretty cool. Um, just remember, of course, bards are primarily your uh, support. They use their bardic inspiration. They help out with skill checks and that sort of thing. Typically, you're not going to be the damage dealer. This is going to give you the ability to also do a little bit of damage with your weapon. We're gonna pick up some key features here that are gonna allow you to deal out some pretty decent damage. Um, it's gonna be more of a Nova type thing as far as you, you can have one round where you blow a bunch of resources and do a bunch of damage at once and just kind of poke a huge hole in whatever it is that you are fighting, which I think is a lot of fun to do. Um, a lot of bards don't really have that kind of potential, um, or at least you have to be very specific in what you do in order to do that, um, especially with weapons. So I think that this is going to be a lot of fun to do. So let's see just how effective we can make this. So at level one for a paladin, we get a couple of things here. We get our divine sense. And so this allows you to open up your, your senses, open up your mind to uh, sense things around you, certain types of creatures, which is pretty cool. It's, it's more of a flavor feature, but it could come in handy if something is, you know, hiding out right behind a bush or something like that. Um, there, there are a lot of stipulations with it, but it's still a pretty good feature to get. Um, the better feature though is lay on hands lay on hands gives you some free healing in your hands so i typically like to do the uh the good game strategy where you just just you know smack somebody on the booty and you just just heal them or you could just smack them in the face do you know however much damage but then heal the rest of it so you could do that um i, I like the idea of grung paladins as well um, where they heal by touch but then they also hurt you um yeah, they're they're a little confused. It's okay, um, but yeah, we're not doing that. We are we are tiefling time with this one. But yeah, lay on hands gives you a pool of five hit points per level that you have in paladin. Um, we're not going super far with paladin, but we'll have enough to where it's not terrible. Um, the biggest thing is that you don't have to burn spell slots, and you can use as much of these as you want um, at, at a time. So you could somebody goes at, goes down, you just use one of them to bring them back. And you can do that a bunch of times. So that's usually where I find this to be most effective. Um, or you could use it during a rest, that sort of thing. But I really like Lay on Hands. I think it's a really effective, a, a really, really effective feature. Um, next, we get at level two, we get a fighting style. I'm going to recommend taking the dueling fighting style here just for a little bit of extra damage. Um, I, I think that it's a little bit more effective in the build that we're going for here. Um, yes. It would be nice to take a couple cleric spells, but I I just don't think that I want to give up the dueling fighting style over taking a few more spells, especially since we got some spells with our uh, with our race. I think I'm okay. I, I think I'm fine. Speaking of spells, we also get our spell casting feature here at level two, which we'll talk about here in just a second, and we also get Divine Smite. This is what makes Paladins super busted, kind of, uh, in addition to a bunch of other things that Paladins get, but Divine Smite allows you to blow spell slots to deal extra damage when you hit with a weapon attack, which is insane. Uh, you can scale this up quite a bit to where you're dealing a bunch of damage, and we are going to be taking full advantage of that, so don't you worry. It's going to happen, and it's going to be wonderful. Um, so, spellcasting. 
Um, Paladins get some pretty cool spells. Um, they get a lot of really unique spells. Um, so definitely take a look at all of those. We get some smite spells. You get some aura spells. Although most of your aura spells don't come until a little bit later than what we are going to get access to. At least the really good ones. So unfortunately we're not going to have all of the really great ones. But we'll have access to maybe one or two. So don't worry about it. It's coming. Um, as far as first level spells, I have a lot that I really like here. I really like Thunderous Smite actually. Um, it is not subtle, so if you're trying to be sneaky with something, maybe take a different one. Um, but I like Thunderous Smite. It's really, really neat. Bless is kind of a, a no-brainer. Take Bless and Command. And Searing Smite if you don't like Thunderous Smite. I, I don't think you need both necessarily. Um, just one or the other is fine. But I definitely recommend taking at least one of them. Um, we're going to get a couple other first level spells that are both really good here in just a second though because at paladin 3 we get to choose our subclass and this is fun um so we are going to choose the path of vengeance paladin um we are working on some damage here and i think the path of vengeance is one of the better ones as far as dealing a bunch of extra damage the extra spells that you get are really nice um there's there's just a lot that really works well with what we're going for here with path of vengeance and so i think that it's a good choice again you could do a lot of this without path of vengeance you could go with a different one and get some other features and that sort of thing but i really like this one for this build specifically um so we get divine health which is really nice um it, it it's it's very standard for for paladin type stuff um and then we get our oath spells from being a path of vengeance paladin we get bane which is wonderful um bless but the opposite um we get hunter's mark which we probably won't use much just because it does take concentration and we have so much more to concentrate on than Hunter's Mark. So unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna really be able to use that all that much, so sorry. Um, and we will eventually get to where we can get Hold Person and Misty Step, which are both really good to get for free. Um, especially Misty Step as a Paladin, that's really nice. Uh, I, I love that. So that's a great spell to get for free. Um, we also get a couple of channel divinity options here. Paladins get all the things. It's wonderful. Um, Abjure Enemy, which is pretty cool. Um, we won't use it nearly as much as we're going to use Vow of Enmity, though. Vow of En... Oh my goodness. This is a really, really cool feature that allows you to just kind of gain advantage on all your attacks for the next little while on a single creature as long as it's within 10 feet of you uh yeah it's kind of crazy so yeah you just blow your your use of your channel divinity and you just have advantage yeah that's kind of insane it's it's wonderful i love it um so it, it's great we also get harness divine power of course if you're using the optional features this allows you to just regain spell slots wonderful i love that it's it's that's always a great thing um then at paladin four we get a asi or a feat and we're actually going to go ahead and bump our strength here to 18. i know that we've got a couple of odd uh a couple of odd stats here and it makes more sense to bump those but you know what oh well i want to bump our strength because that is what all of our attacks are based on we don't have room on this build to take any kind of a warlock dip so sorry not gonna happen um we we can't uh we can't just focus only on our uh only on our charisma unfortunately um also during this time of course it's a little early but you're definitely going to want to try to get the heaviest armor that you can get um obviously you probably aren't going to have that much money right now just because full plate is incredibly expensive but just be thinking about that it's something you're going to want to try to pick up along the way whenever you can um we also get martial versatility so you can change up your fighting style I, I'm, I'm good. I think dueling is fine. But if you need to, go for it. It's, it's there. Um, we also, at Paladin 5, get extra attack. I know, we're going really deep into Paladin. I know you're getting worried. Is this a bard video? I, I don't know. Well, we're getting there. We get extra attack at Pally 5, and this is kind of one of the main reasons we're here. Um, it was either this or go with a different class, but honestly... I really like Paladin here for going ahead and getting started with some spells. Um, it helps somewhat with our spell progression for Bard, just because we're getting something. Um, it's it's definitely slowing us down compared to uh, compared to what we normally do. And as you can tell, we're not going to get our 
final level of magical secrets at this point so yeah unfortunately we're having to uh, to make a bit of a sacrifice here but i think this is still going to be a really fun way to do this um as far as some second level spells we can get though Branding Smite, Lesser Restoration, and Prayer of Healing are all really, really good options. Um, I've talked about these, well, not Branding Smite, I haven't talked about Branding Smite yet. Um, but the other two I've talked about quite a bit as far as why those are really good. Branding Smite is, of course, wonderful. These, sm these Smite spells are absolutely great. They are exclusive to Paladins, but, of course, you could pick them up through Magical Secrets or, or other features like that. I recommend taking them because they are absolutely wonderful. So before we go to Bard, we are taking Bard next level, I promise. We're, we're going over to Bard and we are not going back to anything else. I want to take just a second to look at how much damage we're doing right now on a Nova round at level 5. Um, I will say this is not necessarily what I would consider an optimized build as far as damage goes, um, but it's Paladin so they do a bunch of damage so i want i want to see i want to show you why we're making the case for paladin being our our building block that the bard is going to be layered on top of so here what you would like to do is right before combat starts you would prefer to go ahead and cast thunderous smite go ahead and have that on your weapon before combat starts if you can't quite do that, um, then that's your first turn, and then you want to dodge, and then second turn or first turn, if you if you got uh, if you got Thunder Smite off, then you want to go ahead and use your Vow of en Enmity. My goodness, you want to go ahead and use your Vow of Enmity. This will give you your advantage on everything you do, which means that you will uh, you'll be doing a bunch of damage, and you have more of a chance to crit. Crits on smites are insane, and this just gives you even more of a chance to do it. So let's go ahead and see how much damage we're doing here. So we get to attack twice because we are level five, which is wonderful. So our first attack is going to be 1d8 slashing for our weapon, 2d6 thunder damage from our spell, 3d8 radiant from our smite, uh, plus four for our strength modifier and plus two for our dueling. Um, then our second attack, 1d8 slashing. We don't get the thunder damage on the second attack, so it's 3d8 radiant, plus four strength, plus two dueling. So 2d6 plus 8d8 plus 12, which gives us roughly 55 damage, assuming no crits. We are, we are likely to crit, so, you know, it's probably a little bit higher than that, but yeah that's pretty good <laughs> at level five that's pretty nice now that does blow some spell slots that does use up a lot of your stuff but it's still a lot of damage and if you're fighting a say you're fighting a a big boss that's going to take a chunk out of their health if you're fighting just a random whatever you're going to kill that in one hit absolutely and it's absolutely gone so you can uh, you can use that however you want but i just wanted to go ahead and take a second and look at what all we're doing here it's pretty nice so at level six we're finally bard one <laughs> we're going to stick with bard the rest of the way because i want all of my bard features now so level one we get a bardic inspiration which is wonderful um, our bardic inspiration is going to be at four uses right now because we are already at a 19 which is great um, and it is going to be a d6 we also get our spell casting um, for cantrips uh, as always i recommend things like vicious mockery mage hand um, things that are just generally useful bards have a lot of great a lot of great uh, cantrips so pick your favorites but those are two of mine um, for level one spells i would really think to take things like dissonant whispers um, one it has whispers in the name but two it really also fits the flavor so i like that i like that a lot um, tasha's hideous laughter and healing word are also really really great um, again we're trying for battlefield control here so if you can take something out of the fight and then while you kill its friends and then deal with it while it's laying there laughing on the ground then you're doing all right <laughs> so i really like that um your spell save is going to be pretty good because you're at plus four so i think this is wonderful so definitely take those three and again if you want to take any different ones great go for it uh, at Bard 2, we are taking Jack of All Trades here, which is wonderful. So we get a little bit of a boost to all of our ability checks, which is great. 
Um, Song of Rest is a D6 for us, and we get our Magical Inspiration, so that is wonderful as well. Then at Bard 3, we get our Expertise. I normally don't recommend what to take here, but definitely take Deception and Persuasion. Um, these are going to be incredibly useful for what you are doing as far as this Bard goes, um, because the whole thing is that you're impersonating people and that you can uh, learn about them, you can uh, look like them, you can basically try to be them, and this will help you get away with a lot of that a lot easier. So definitely take those two. Um, we also get our Psychic Blades, which is going to give us a little bit of extra damage, which is always good. Um, it is at the cost of a Bardic Inspiration, but that is okay. Um, again, we are being a little selfish on this on this Bard, but it's okay. It's all right. It's it's okay. Your your party will uh, definitely not be angry at you for being selfish. Um, this isn't something I would say to use all five of your Bardic Inspirations on, just because Bardic Inspiration is so good. So don't go out and use all five of them or all four of them for now we'll get to five here in a minute don't use all of them per long rest on yourself please use them on your on your friends as well um blow it on your nova round blow one of them maybe one other um but make sure you're using the rest of them on your on your party they will be very happy that you do we also get words of terror so we can speak really spooky and yeah that's about it it really isn't that great of a feature unfortunately um just because of all of the engineering that you have to do with that kind of a social situation um yeah it's not great um as far as second level spells here though um heat metal is pretty cool and enthrall enthrall is good because you actually have a pretty decent ac here so i, I would recommend taking that I, I think it's really really nice at bard four we get an asi or a feat and we're going to take a feat here i waited to take the feat because we would have been just kind of sitting on this for a while if we had taken it at level four so taking it here is a little bit more effective in my opinion and we're actually going to take actor actors normally again not a feat that i normally would recommend on a on a build like this that is more mechanically minded but it makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense on on this kind of a build here. So actor gives us a number of a number of advantages here. One, it gives us a plus one to our charisma. So now we are maxed out. So it's a half feet. So that's wonderful. Um, but in addition, we also get advantage on deception and performance checks to make ourselves seem like someone else. That's our whole thing. <laughs> that's kind of this subclass's whole thing. So. Actor is kind of a natural to take here. I, I I really don't think you can take this subclass and not take actor. It's just it's just too good. Um, at Bard five, our Bardic Inspiration gets boosted to a D eight, and we get Font of Inspiration. So now we can heal those back on a short rest, which is wonderful. Um, we get third level spells here as well. Again, taking some control stuff, Hypnotic Pattern, Mass Healing Word, and Slow. All really good spells. I think they're wonderful especially at this at this level once you're here at level 10 taking slow can be kind of amazing honestly um i think this is one of those spells that that actually scales really well even though it doesn't say anything about scaling just because it causes your opponents to have to make decisions on what they can and cannot do and it really shuts down people with multi-attack that's where it kind of gets you. So if you've got something that's got multi-attack that's going to attack a ton of times, cast slow on it and it is majorly neutered um, because it relies more on a bunch of attacks hitting you for less damage rather than one big attack doing a ton of damage. So yeah, slow can be really, really useful and get you out of some really sticky situations. Definitely consider taking that. At part six, we get a couple of features. We get our counter charm, which I don't really care, and mantle of whispers, which we talked about in detail in Tuesday's video. If you missed that, that will be up in the iCard above. We talked about all of the uh, whispers bard stuff there. But basically, I said that I don't really like this feature just because of the specific scenario that has to be set up and that you have to be there and, and all this stuff as far as capturing the shadow. And you could literally just replicate it with other spells so again detect thoughts and disguise self if you've taken those spells which you already got disguise self from your racial just take detect thoughts and you can kind of already do this so 
yeah, I don't really like that feature. Anyway, Bard 7, no features, but we do get 4th level spells. And yeah, 4th level spells are kind of where I consider us kind of playing with fire here. Um, greater Invisibility is a must take, honestly, for me. Um, I really, really like Greater Invisibility. It allows you to get out of a lot of situations that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise, um, or it allows your friends to get out of situations they may not have otherwise. Um, Phantasmal Killer is really nice, and Polymorph is just one you can't leave home without. At Bard 8, we of course get an ASI or a feat again, and I'm going to go ahead and cap off our Strength. So we now have a 20 in Charisma and Strength. Pretty great. I really, really like that. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Bard 9, we get our Song of Rest upgraded to a D8, which is wonderful. And we also get 5th level Bard spells. Mass Cure Wounds, Raise Dead, and Hold Monster are all really nice. Of course, if you don't need Raise Dead and you've got like a Cleric or something to do that, save that spot for something else. But uh, I, if you don't have somebody to get people up from the dead, you're going to want to be that guy because otherwise you could be in for a bad time. People are going to be dying a lot here at level 14. Um, level 15, we are Bard 10 and we get our Bardic Inspiration up to a D10. Expertise once again and we get Magical Secrets for the first time. Now there are a bunch of different ways that you can go with this one. Normally I have just kind of a, a set list as far as what Bard spells I normally go with because there's just some really good ones. But here, I would recommend something different. Wall of Force, I would definitely take either here or the next time you get Magical Secrets. Um, I would probably take it here though. For the other spell, I would suggest one or the other as far as these go. Shadow Blade or Banishing Smite. Banishing Smite is a high level Paladin spell, which of course you would need to be a much higher level Paladin to take, but you know what, you can take it because you're a Bard and you can just kind of use it. So Banishing Smite is a little bit extra damage and you might just end the fight right there by sending somebody back to their home plane. That could be really great or at least it gives you a chance to breathe and that's amazing. That's why it's a high level Paladin spell. Shadow Blade is really cool because you can just be empty handed and then conjure this blade up and go to town. You also can just upcast this to where it does a bunch of extra damage. Um, so yeah, you can be dealing a bunch of damage with this just shadowy blade in your hand. And I think it's super on point for College of Whispers Bard to have a shadowy blade. I mean, come on, like I feel like that's just kind of natural. So I would take one or the other of those. If you want to take both, great, take Wall of Force later or take one of these later, whatever it is. You don't have to take both now, but uh, it, it definitely is, is really cool. So I wanna take just a, one more second to look at the damage that we are doing here at this point. Um, we won't do this anymore for this build, but I wanted to take a look at what our burst round is looking at now, just because we just now got Shadow Blade, um, assuming that you took it. If you didn't take it, then this doesn't really apply, but I think that we should take a look at it. So let's see what we got now. So right before combat starts, you wanna cast Shadow Blade at either fifth or sixth level. I recommend 5th, um, just because the damage doesn't change between 5th or 6th level. You only have one 6th level spell slot, you have two 5th level spell slots at this point, so just with how everything works out with Paladin and Bard. Um, if you're confused on how that works, um, there is a guide in the player's handbook as far as how all that works, and I'd be happy to explain that down in the comments below as well, so let me know if that's confusing. Um, but, so cast this at 5th level right before combat starts, so you are ready to go. Round one, you only need one round at this point, so you don't need a setup round if you get this off beforehand. If you can't, then this is your first round. Um, so you want to use your Vow of Enmity as your bonus action to gain advantage on what you are about to smack in the face. And so, when you attack, you are going to get damage from your Shadow Blade, which is 4d8 psychic damage, 5d8 from your Smite, 5d6 for your psychic blades, plus 5 for strength, and plus 2 for dueling twice. So you're going to do that two times in a row. So that's a total of 18d8 plus 5d6 plus 14, which is going to give you roughly 112 damage, assuming no crits. Even though we have a double chance of crits. <laughs> so 
Yeah, you're doing you're doing a good amount of damage. Again, this isn't like you're not doing the most damage you could possibly do, but this is a really fun way to just deal a bunch of damage at once. It's at a pretty large cost because you've used up some fourth level spell slots here. Again, don't use fifth level spell slots for your smites. It doesn't help you anymore. There was an errata where Jeremy Crawford said that you could use up to fifth level spell slots and get an extra d6 on it, but it's not in the official rules, so I don't I don't use that. If you use that, use that at your table, great. Then you'll have one that does uh, 6d8 and then one that does 5d8 um, because you used a fifth and a fourth level spell slot, but that's just something to talk with your DM about. I personally don't use it, but it is Jeremy Crawford, so technically it's it's legal. But anyway, yeah, that's quite a bit of damage, though. And it's, it's, a, it's really fun to roll all those dice, 18d8. I hope you brought all your d8s because that's uh that's a lot of dice to roll um so then at bard 11 no features but we do get some six level spells here um mass suggestion and auto's irresistible dance are great ones that i suggest taking here bard 12 we get another asi or feat and yes you're saying to me you have all these spells that are concentration and you're casting them right before combat starts what happens if you lose concentration the answer is i get sad um but here we're going to take warcaster in, in my opinion and and how numbers work taking warcaster here is going to do better than taking a plus two into our constitution overall advantage is going to give us a better uh a better a better help to what we're doing here um this also allows us to not have to necessarily pull out our weapon and sheath our weapon between each encounter um, between each thing we need to do to cast a spell since we're holding a shield in the other hand um, we'd have to put the weapon away cast pull it back out attack you know whatever whatever we have to do uh, this allows us to not have to do that so we can use our somatic components while we still have our hammer or axe in our hand that's going to be really really nice as well so i think warcaster is great it's really late to be taking it i know but it's it's necessary especially if this is a high level character this is gonna be a lot of fun you're gonna really really enjoy this at bard 13 our song of rest goes up to a d10 and we get seventh level spells the only one i think that's really necessary is force cage um the rest of them i would honestly take some more of your lower level spells that you missed on the first on the way up that's just me um bard 14 we get our magical secrets again as well as shadow lore which shadow lore is pretty good as we talked about again in great detail in last video as far as our spells go i would suggest finger of death because finger of death is fun and either heal or harm whichever way that you want to go with this um, both of those spells are really really nice for what they are and I think that you'll really, really enjoy either one of those. So definitely have fun with that. And finally, at Bard 15, we get our Bardic Inspiration put up to a D12. And we get 8th level Bard spells. So we get Dominate Monster, Feeble Mind, and Power Word Stun. Those are ones that I really like here. Now we do have a 9th level spell slot, so don't be afraid to upcast some things if you need to. Um, but we won't have any 9th level spells known, unfortunately. So that is all for today's build. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As far as our honorable mentions, let's start with multi-classing options that would work with this that I just didn't go with. Starting off, Hexblade Warlock. Hexblade Warlock is wonderful on this type of a build because then you don't necessarily have to worry about strength. Obviously you need enough strength to wear the armor that you're wearing, um, so that's kind of a thing and so you would end up needing a 15 in strength anyway to take some really high high plate armor so i think it ends up being okay um and that's kind of the only thing you get from hexblade which i say only thing like that's like that's insignificant it is very significant that you don't necessarily have to rely on strength and that you can rely on uh on charisma instead which is still wonderful but we were able to get our strength and our charisma up to a 20 on this build which is really really awesome next is a split of paladin and fighter of taking less paladin and adding fighter more specifically taking three levels of paladin so if we take three levels of paladin um, we don't get second level paladin spells or extra attack which is kind of my 
uh, my problem here. I would rather have extra attack than action surge, just because action surge is once per per rest, whereas we can just extra attack all the time. Um, the only other thing you're really going to get is you get second wind, so you get a little bit of healing, and then you get another fighting style, which oh well, you know what I mean. So again, I don't think that's all that great. Um, yeah, and and it makes your spell progression even worse. So yeah, I, I didn't take that. The other one is Shadow Sorcerer. I think it really, really fits with the theme. The As far as the features go, they're all right. They're not terrible. They're not the best, but it really fits with the theme. So if you're looking for roleplay type stuff, that's right down your alley. So definitely consider that. As far as feats go that we could have gone with, we could have done something with a heavy weapon. So heavy weapon master would have been really, really cool to take. Um, we also could have taken skilled or linguist. I definitely would consider taking one or both of those in your uh, in your campaign, just because skilled would give you more things to choose from as far as expertise. Um, and if you chose a different background, maybe you didn't end up picking up deception where you need it. You didn't pick up performance, whatever. This helps patch that up, which is good. Um, linguist, so when you are copying someone else and maybe you don't even speak their language, this will be handy and that'll be really, really helpful for you. And then of course, Polar Master, I also really, really like on this build too. Gives you a little bit of an ex a little bit of extra damage, but it kind of competes with your Bardic Inspiration and your Vow of Enmity. So usually I'm going to be doing that on the same turn is attacking and using Vow of Enmity so it kind of competed so that's why I didn't end up going with that as far as races go Changeling was kind of my number one uh, Changeling is super flavorful and spot on for what we're trying to do with this subclass so definitely consider doing that That's but to me it was too on the nose it, it gave us too much redundancy with what it is that we already got for features, so that's why it didn't end up going with it. And the other one I would consider is a Fear Bulg. Fear Bulgs are really, really fun, first of all, and they get the ability to look differently than themselves innately. The only thing is that they don't get dark vision, but we can make that work, you know? Uh, I really like Fear Bulgs. I think they're a lot of fun, and they are really, really flavorful as well. This week, looking forward to this week, we are going to be talking about the Blood Hunter in general as far as the class goes. And next week, we're going to begin subclass ranking the Blood Hunter, starting with the Ghost Slayer, which is a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I hope you have a great week. Stay safe out there, stay healthy, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.